Welcome back, everybody. It's time for the roundtable here, and it's about the governor's state of the state speech, and I'm going to let the Republican analyst here start on this thing. And I have to say first, Tom Moran of the Star-Ledger covered the same speech that everybody saw. And on the front page the next day, Tom Moran and the Star-Ledger who endorsed Christie said, that speech came from some parallel universe that has no relationship to the facts on the ground in New Jersey. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it comes to a clue to Tom that Chris Christie's running for president of the United States. Uh, really... Uh, and that was his audience, wasn't it? Well, of course. I mean, uh, typically, a, a governor who's running for president, who commands such a national media attention as Chris Christie does, uh, no other governor around the country, a Republican governor thinking about running for president, received the same type of press that Chris Christie did, national. Uh, he dominated the news uh, uh, the other day. Um, he, uh, what he had to say was to a national audience. And, and what he, he said was critiqued to some, to some degree as what well, I think Tom Moran said, the Seinfeld speech, uh, uh, a speech about nothing. No, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I, I, I think Chris Christie laid out some very strong principles uh, about which he's going to talk about in the coming weeks and months and when he begins to run for president. He's looking beyond New Jersey. He's talking to a national audience about what's important to people in this country and critiquing the Obama administration and speaking about some very strong, important points that you can hear a lot more about. Well, I saw, I watched that speech in its entirety, Adam, and I saw your, your fellow Democrats uh, uh, remarkably restrained in their response to the governor. In fact, more so than I think I've ever seen before, and I've seen a lot of these state of the state speeches here, uh, that didn't augur well for a bipartisan approach that he, that he was proposing in that speech. This wasn't a state of the state. This was his introduction to the country. It lacked substance. It really laid out no vision. It was a pat on his back for the last five years. No vision for what he wants to do in the state for the year. Can tell anyone tell me one thing that he laid out that he's actually looking to do in the state of New Jersey over the next year? What I heard, and I'm not a car guy, what I heard was we replaced our Mercedes with a Subaru, kind of seems like a downgrade to me in terms of our economic policy. We, we 49th in job growth. He tried to sell an economic policy that uh, is flawed, that is part of a national trend, nothing to do with his policies. And, and subsequently, I heard a speech that did not relate to the people of New Jersey. It was more of him trying to take a victory lap as he leads on to his presidential. Well, well on that point of where the speech was going and who he wanted to see, hear it, um, one thing, Sabil, I'd like to go to you because, you know, down at the State House there, they had, he had that briefing for the national press and national media and excluded the New Jersey media from that briefing. And I was a State House reported for many years, and uh, there would be a, a big reprisal from the State House press corps if that ever happened, if it was ever allowed. Somehow it was allowed. But uh, what did you see when you saw down there, and what was the reaction of the press corps to that? Yeah, I mean, Governor, throw us a bone. We've been covering you this whole time before you even got national attention, and now that you're starting to get it, you leave us out of the loop. I mean, what does that say about his governing style? So, uh, no, the local press corps wasn't very happy about it, but then it does show that Governor Christie is focusing exclusively right now on running for president for versus running New Jersey. Is, uh, Steve, do you think in the case here, you're a communications expert on top of it, um, the idea at exclu to exclude a press corps that you may very well need more than ever in this year is sort of uh, patched together so many problems in the state right now, uh, not that they're going to be totally friendly, but to do that, is that a little politically risky to do that? A couple things. First, on some level I'm conflicted because I was able to do this interview with the governor that we talked about before when you get an hour on public broadcasting with him and then at the same time you see that the governor made a decision with his people not to have the local the New Jersey press there and go nationally would I have rather he had the New Jersey press there absolutely did I think it was the right thing to have the New Jersey press there absolutely it was a political decision that was made a strategic decision that was made I think it would have been a better situation, a smarter situation, and you still could have gotten the national exposure without the local New Jersey blowback. That is my sense of it. But the governor is going to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. So just because I got what we wanted to get, that exclusive interview, doesn't mean that for my colleagues I go, well, we got it. So the heck with you. I think it was not the best thing to do. I, I agree. I, I agree with Steve. And, you know, look, I, I worked for President Reagan and his campaigns in 76 and 1980 on the press staff. And, and I remember very, very much that the California press corps was very, very much a part of the national press corps. And I can tell you many stories. Of course. I mean, Lou Cannon, a good friend of mine, I mean, it was 
front and center, you know. I mean, you know, so I, I'm not really sure what this was all about, but uh, I, I would have preferred to see the New Jersey press corps there, but, you know, whatever. The fact of the matter is uh, he put forward a, a, a national approach, a beginning to his, his campaign that's going to be coming, and he laid out, Adam, I'm sorry, I don't agree. He laid out some very good themes in his speech there, particularly the Everything question, was about what he did in the well, past, not well, about the future. Adam, you're going to no, blow off the on. whole, excuse me for interrupting, Steve, you're going to blow off the whole, listen, the I would stuff. rather he talked drug about stuff. The Hurricane Sandy situation, right. those people suffering, that's my view. He chose not to. But you're, it's like you're saying the entire discussion about how he feels that those who are dealing with drug problems should be in treatment and not in prison. When everyone stood, I, Democrats, I, I will, Republicans, like, that's a non-issue to you? Me, that he, was that's not a substantive program? I would agree with you. That was absolutely the one piece of the speech where he laid out some substance. Nothing, no, nothing about transportation trust fund. Is the single biggest but conversation in the state right now. He completely he's taking, ignored it. He's taking Sandy lead, ignored but, 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 it. Excuse me. He's taking the lead on this issue around the country, and other governors around the country, both Republicans and Democrats, are following Chris Christie's lead on this very issue. On the transportation trust no, fund? No, 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 no. On, on, the, drug, on the drug issue with regard to... Uh, he how, is how, taking how, leadership how, on it. No question that, about that, yeah. But said it's the yeah. way governor christie's taking leadership on the drug issue he almost sounded like a liberal standing up there he was kind of channeling bill clinton i feel liberal. your pain he had it's tears new. in his eyes republicans are known for being tough on drugs the whole war on drugs nixon started in the first sure. place so now you have governor christie standing there tears in his eyes saying it's a disease kind of excusing it so it was it was governor christie sounding national sounding like a national candidate but at the same time does it serve him well with the republican primary what did he mean by the way i want to ask steve this what the, a national candidate uh, here, what did he mean by the phrase in your mind? He looked at the Democrats in particular when he said this, and he said, "By the way, I'll be standing here in one year." <laughs> What does that mean? Well, because everybody, a lot of Democrats, uh, particularly the senior leaders, think that uh, he was leaving earlier this year, actually. Mm -hmm. and it was a betting game as to what day he was going to leave. And so I he, was one who never thought that was the case. But so in many a subtle people thought way, it was, yes. I don't, maybe it's not so subtle, but in a subtle way, he said, I am still going to be yes, in Trenton. That's right. Yes. No matter what I do about the president. <laughs> that is correct. And that's Jim, right. we talked about this earlier. Do I believe it's going to be incredibly challenging to be a, and obviously I do believe the governor's running. Most of us believe that. The speech clearly, in my mind, made it uh, obvious the governor's running. Do I think it's going to be very challenging to be a successful candidate for president and still run the state? Yes. But I also believe the governor believes. I've never seen anyone in public life with more confidence in himself or herself than Governor Christie. He truly believes he can do this. Yes. The more important question is, do the people of the state believe that? Can the legislature, will the legislature, controlled by the Democrats, be there to do what needs to be done in a bipartisan fashion. But hold on a second. No, no, no. That is no, the, the larger legislature, question. No, the structure of the state government is that the governor as the executive proposes and the legislature okay. disposes. So it requires any governor, not leadership, to propose elements. Yes, that's right. There were no proposals at all Jim, alluded to by yet. the governor. The uh, that's true. The, the state of the state we is will the need to that, speech. Jim. The right. budget speech next right. month is a finance right. speech. But let me throw something sure. out here. Uh, when you're dealing with both, and Steve and I talked about this before, when you're dealing with both having to solve the problems in New Jersey and propose solving the problems on the presidential trail that go into Iowa here, how do you do both? And the governor is a Jersey guy, no doubt about it, full agreement on here. Jersey people might be forgiven if they said, we're paying you $175,000 a year. Put your feet here and solve our problems. He can. How are you going to do both? Well, well, how are you going to do well, both? Well, hold on. You're, you're assuming that he can't multitask. You're assuming that this is a man that can't is not a good executive. In fact, quite frankly, I think that's one of his strongest suits is that he is a fantastic executive. But the people he, of New Jersey don't he, think that he, that he is. That he does delegate, that he, that he does have a great team around him to administer the state. And I agree with Steve. I, I think he feels very confident that he can handle running this state, handling these problems at the same time that he'll be campaigning is it and the putting same up confidence, put his message. Steve? That he country. said he returned the state to prosperity, and we ended up receiving uh, five credit downgrades from Wall Street in the last Look, half Jim. of the year? Look, Jim, Jim, we've had a miserable economy in the last five, six years, seven years, and Chris Christie has done as good as anybody with regard to his philosophy of running this government to change the, the culture, to change things in New Jersey but Wall as best as he could. Here's the thing. Show me. But the people, but according to the latest poll, the people of New Jersey don't think Governor Christie can do both. They actually don't think he's doing a good job as governor. They believe that he's only focused on the White House. Latest numbers, 39% I sure. believe that he is only 39% approve his job, 47% right. completely disapprove. Typical, <laughs> so they don't typical. think that Governor Christie can do so, both. So you make a very good point, and here's the way I see it. It's one thing to say the governor has tremendous confidence in himself. 
But that is not the entire equation because you have stakeholders, in this case, the people of New Jersey. The governor's never going to say to me or anyone who gets an interview or he talks with publicly, I'm really worried about the poll numbers. Right. But you know the governor cares about that. And I've got to believe the governor's going to have to figure out how to be more engaged as a chief executive. Yeah. Now, it's one thing to yeah. say he delegates, and I respect that. Yeah. But as a student of leadership, yeah. I believe the governor is going to work harder to be more directly involved. And Jim, on the Transportation Trust Fund, when I asked him that question in the public television interview, he said to me, Steve, look, I have a plan, and I'm going to negotiate with the legislature. But I'm not telling you in this interview, because last time I checked, you don't have a vote in the state legislature. Right. And my point is this. He isn't going to talk publicly in that state of the state about what he's going to do on the gas tax, but I believe he does have a plan and he yes. is negotiating. Yeah, to Sabeel's point, I said, uh, show me the money, Governor, basically on here. That's what Jersey is saying. And we will come back in a second. We'll do our winners and losers here. Next, our winners and losers of the week when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's time for winners and losers. Uh, I'll start. Uh, my winner is uh, Transportation Secretary Jamie Foxx down there on the role he played, basically, to uh, restore the cuts that were proposed by the Port Authority for overnight service uh, at PATH. PATH is still my loser. Why? It's losing $1 million a day. Uh, so what did you really save here? It needs to be addressed on um, what they're going to do about that loss-making thing. $1 million a day that bridge and tunnel payers pay. Uh, to support on there. So, Sabeel. Uh, my winner is my show, Chasing for Rolling the Red Carpet at the State of the State speech, and for asking Governor Christie, what is he wearing? And his response was, You cannot be interested in that. <laughs> that I give, was good, by the right, way. I right. really like that. Exactly. I give Governor Christie credit for that, because he's yeah. got enough scrutiny. He doesn't need the fashion yeah. police breathing down his neck. <laughs> and for my loser, I pick uh, Governor Christie's orange sweater. Uh, it was uh, lucky for a while uh, with the Dallas Cowboys, but uh, since they lost the playoffs, then, yep, you know. That's it. By, by the way, uh, Democratic Toss Assembly people were threatening to wear orange sweaters to the state of the state and better sense prevailed. They did. Seriously. Adam, go ahead. Winner, uh, free speech. Um, while I find some of their covers offensive, uh, Charlie Hepo, 3 million copies, normally sells 50,000 copies. I think it says something for free speech, whether you like or don't like what somebody says. It's the fundamental right that anything can be said in uh, this country and around the world, every free country. My loser, uh, the Republicans in the legislature, a bipartisan state of the state. How do they run and say, we can do things different when the governor's talking about doing things bipartisan. It makes it very hard for them to create a difference with their Democratic colleagues. Okay. Okay. Steve. Uh, winner this week, Congressman Donald Norcross, uh, elevated to the House uh, Armed Services Committee, member of the Democratic Steering Committee, going to be a real powerhouse in Congress, uh, a guy to watch who's going to really spread his wings and be very influential down there. Uh, loser. State Senator Mike Doherty. I mean, really. I mean, come on. Uh, saying what he said about the governor. He said he was a failed governor. Yeah, well, he's entitled to his opinion. Okay, you know what? Right. <laughs> Steve. First of all, I didn't think you could pick your own show as the winner. I, <laughs> that. I, I would have gone that way. Uh, winner, Dana Red, who is the mayor, Democratic mayor of Canada. Yeah. The governor praised her publicly. I'm sure the mayor of Newark uh, did not appreciate that and others, but she was praised, and we wish everyone in Camden all the best. Uh, the loser. The casinos, again, check this out. The numbers, Jim, you know this, the numbers in, the, in Atlantic City dropped another 5%. The biggest loss of the casinos in the past year since the 1980s. More bad news in Atlantic City. I wish that wasn't the case, but they're the losers. All right, very good. Thanks, everybody.